Welcome, everybody, to the X Factor podcast. I am, uh, oh, I am uh, triggered, but I am also your uh, co-host, Coach Brew. And uh, down uh, in the bottom square, as one of our P1 listeners, James Elliott, likes to say, is the DFE. And over there is my co-host, our fearless leader, the voice of reason, uh, a.k.a. the moral compass mr john rennie john say hello to the people hello to the people there are tens of people listening as we speak no pressure no pressure to deliver a good show today tens of people tuned in no that's i'm it doesn't matter if there's just one if if i can save just one uh it's worth it all i know is my arm's gonna be tired today (laughs) on the show coach why is your arm gonna be tired today because when i get fired up i take the mic out of the stand and I hold it like I hold a grudge. And I think the mic's going to be out of stand the whole show. I have I a feeling. Fired up. And folks, this is the X Factor podcast, which is brought to you by our friends at Bottom Gun Coffee. BottomGunCoffee.com. They make the best coffee in the entire coffee business. Juan, I'll put it to you this way Juan Valdez. Yep of coffee bean growing fame in south america yep wishes he were bottom gun coffee yes how about that he wears bottom gun coffee underwear under ruse under ruse (laughs) parker do you know what under ruse are i have culture reference from the 70s i have no idea what under ruse are we need to get him some he uh he wears amish underwear Black tidy whiteies with a black undershirt. Might even be a onesie. Right? With a uh, flap in the back, but you know. Yeah, the little flap, the yeah. the, the trap door. Trap door, baby. Did Jebediah issue the, you those along with everyone in the family? Yeah, after his first barn raising. So this is the X Factor podcast as we digress. Uh coming after Parker pretty hard already early in the show. But what we're talking about today are X Factor failures. Mm. Uh, In a previous episode, we talked about almost X Factor. This is the antithesis of X Factor. It's not even the distant cousin to almost X Factor. It is just an abject failure. Like mm-hmm. if, if we mm-hmm. reference your product in this episode, it's because you're getting a F minus in life. <laughs> Just stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel right now, I have my X I'm teasing you with my X factor failure. And we're going to go, uh, we're going to go hard in the paint on this, uh, as, as the kids like to say it. Yes. Um, but yeah, so X Factor failure. Yeah. Like you could have been X Factor, but you just screwed up the design, the execution, the communication, the uh, customer service, the delivery, the price point, or in the case of the one I've selected, all of the above. Uh. So John Rennie, for our new listeners who are not P1s, and maybe are discovering us for the first time. Could you, um, I know I'm the coach and you're the, uh, the nuclear astrophysicist, chemist, submarine commander extraordinaire. Um, but could you maybe coach these people on what a P1 is, how to become one, and also what the X factor really means? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, here's the deal, X factor, you know, that's, that's someone or something or a company, a brand that's got some way that they have risen above the rest of the people in their industry. So it's those brands, those people that are, have that X factor, that, that's, that it. And so we like to feature them and talk about them. And most of the time we're talking about the people that are the best of the best and the brightest of the brightest. But today we're going to talk about the ones that kind of came up short. Yeah, they, uh, what's the figure of speech? They really screwed the pooch. Yeah, seriously. So, and again, if we talk about uh, P1 customers, what is a P1 customer? Yeah, well, what? So, coach, yes? 
What's a P1? I was just holding the, 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 the one up for oh. you. Sign language. I thought you were pointing to your X factor failure, but no, yeah, no. Our, uh, the P1s are the ones that are, are actively engaged in our podcast. Those are the people that are leaving us voice messages. They're sharing it with their friends. They're liking it. They're active on our social media pages and on our YouTube account. So we've got a number of P1X1s. And uh, we've back, we've sent out some uh, packages to a few of our P1 uh, listeners. And hopefully they got them. And uh, we'll probably be featuring some of those on future episodes. Shout out uh, James Elliott, shout out Adam Todd, shout out Paul Weaver, shout out Sarah Swenson, day one P1s, baby. And uh, in other words, what my very um, polite, politically correct co-host is trying to say is get your ass off the bench and get into the game. If you are not sharing this podcast, if you're not telling other people about it, if you are not um, raving about our collective genius, uh, it is socially irresponsible of you, we believe. Absolutely. And uh, it's 2021. You should be woke. You should be, uh, you should be raving about you know, causes that are near and dear to your heart. Uh, we're very environmentally conscious. We yeah. um, are very inclusive. Sure. We are, um, uh, we leave a very small carbon footprint Listen, okay. I don't, I don't on earth and in cyberspace. What else do we do, John? So I don't, we, you know, none of us own a private jet just for the reason is we don't want to hurt the environment. Unlike I, some people in the government. I'm grass fed. Are you grass fed? Nice. Not like pot grass, like actual grass. I'm okay. green. I'm green AF as the kids say. I'm uh, uh, non GMO organic grass fed, fair trade, free range, free range coach brew. Maybe some THC in there. THC free. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that stuff. I've actually, fun fact about Coach Brew. Fun I've fact. actually never, ever done any kind of drug, social recreational drug ever in my life. Hmm. What about like, ask me, if, ask me if I've drank beer. Have you had any beer, Coach? Yeah, that's a very different answer. I've had beer. <laughs> <laughs> not, not from this thing that I'm holding up. This <laughs> thing but i've had beer for a lot of other delivery mechanisms have you ever had cbd oil are you cbd oil free um is that that's stuff healthy, that, that healthy? You, that's like it's healthy. synthetic it's synthetic you put it in your car and you don't have to change the oil for like ten thousand yeah, miles it. is that what that is yeah wait that's cbd 50 or 30 <laughs> coach <laughs> We're talking X Factor fails. What is that you've been holding on your shoulder? Uh, We'll get into that in a minute. All right. Um, That was a ruse. (laughs) What was it? Not what I'm talking about. You want to know? Am I going first today? Is this? Well, I thought so. You were carrying that thing on your shoulder, and I figured. Fun fact: Before the show, every every time before the show, we play spin the bottle. Yeah. Not the way you're thinking of, you sickos. But whoever it lands on, that's who goes first. So I guess I'm going first. Sometimes you do rock, scissors, paper. But um, so this is all a a ruse. My X factor failure, John. Yes. Is, well, and here's how I know this. Um, There was a time not too long ago when I needed, uh, I had an ailment that required a, uh, an ointment it was awkward it was uncomfortable and it hurt and i needed an over-the-counter ointment to solve my medical problem back there Mm. you know i'm talking about back there sure thanks i went i went to the pharmacy and um it got me thinking this is an absolute X factor failure. Preparation A through G. Yeah. Like we have preparation H. Right. But it took you eight attempts to get it right. Like you didn't get it right with preparation A. Then you tried again and it was preparation B and you still got it wrong all the way up until you got to the letter H. Is that accurate? Is that how that works? Is that so. how that worked? I think so. 
That's how WD-40 was named. It was the 40th attempt. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Preparation H was the eighth attempt. Right. But seven X-Factor failures. And um, can you feel that? <laughs> can you feel that, John? How about our listeners? Parker, listeners, all 10 of you, can you feel that? It, it, I think it's your left one. Yeah, I'm pulling your leg. That's what you feel. I'm pull, I'm tugging on it. I'm tugging on the the bottom of your your blue jeans. I I'm almost feel talking. like you're, I almost feel like I'm in that meme, you know, the one that's got the car swerving off to the right and saying like, "Oh, you thought I was going to talk about this?" Oh, um, I thought you meant the meme where the guy's walking down the sidewalk with his girlfriend and he looks back at the yeah. hot chick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the hot chick. I know. Thanks. You are. Um, no, so I'm pulling your legs, not preparation H or A through G. Um, but if you think about some of the X factor failures that, um, that might've been, I mean, um, I, so I'm going to go down the list of everything I didn't talk about real quick, Sure. but there are a lot of them. There sure. are a lot of X factor failures, things <clears throat> like that might've been the greatest, but ended up being absolute dog shit. The Titanic, the Ford <laughs> Etzel, the Sony Betamax personal favorite new coke mm. crystal pepsi you know talk about the cola wars crystal pepsi you remember that parker you know I what do. crystal pepsi is no it was clear cola it was pepsi that was tastes like pepsi but it was the color of sprite called yeah, crystal that, pepsi that wouldn't work for me not to be confused with crystal which is high-end champagne that you get in the uh in the vip room mm so to speak. Um, here's another one for you. You're going to think I'm making some of these up. Cheetos lip balm. Yep. Cheetos lip balm. Google it. You don't believe me? Fact check my ass. It's true. Coors sparkling water. Yeah, I know. In the Rocky Mountains. Isn't that what they serve normally anyway? Coors yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that was probably the failure. No one could tell it apart. <laughs> from the real thing uh how about this one harley davidson perfume yeah yeah, yeah. Cheetos lip balm right there baby what does that smell like wd-40 i think it tastes like chicken <laughs> uh, <laughs> mcdonald's pizza do you remember the mcpizza parker no i've i've never heard of that but that's you've never been to mcdonald's do you know what mcdonald's is yes okay um how about the espn cell phone mm. oh yeah i've heard that you told me about that google plus ah did you imagine the people at google we got something that's just going to revolutionize social media it's just going to absolutely kick facebook to the curb we're yeah. going to call it google plus and yeah. it's not going to do anything <laughs> it didn't so do those it. are all they were in contention but not what i chose um, but I'm going to unveil that which is my X Factor failure. John, are yes. you ready? I, I'm I'm waiting with bated breath. Okay, so it is something called Popsy, the mini kegerator. Mm. I'm holding it up on the YouTube channel is a mini keg and talk about just taking the talk about just taking the greatest concept ever and ruining it so what what's a challenge that some people have who are beer aficionados but don't drink a ton of beer they like to sample a lot of different ones they prefer draft beer to bottled or canned beer Sure. One of the problems, one of the barriers to entry with being a beer aficionado like that is you have to buy this whole, you know, big keg and have a kegerator in your house. Right. Right. right? <clears throat> so this company, I, I and you're like, I don't, I'm not breaking, first of all, I'm not breaking the free shout out rule because these are bankrupt and they've gone under and they've ceased to exist. So we can mention their name as often as we want. Yes without breaking our no free shout outs rule. So these guys, um, 
marketed themselves as your personal tap room at home. They bring award-winning beers on tap into your home. It's a small startup with a big mission to give access to better beers. And they were building, allegedly, a community of beer enthusiasts where you could order fresh draft beer direct from local craft brewers to be delivered to your home. One Sounds product. great. Yeah. Neighborhood by neighborhood, we're bypassing the supermarket and making fresh, real beer more accessible than ever before. Here's the only problem. They couldn't deliver to like 43, 44 of the states in the continental US. What, what, wait, what? Yeah, so we're gonna deliver fresh beer to your door, but it's illegal to deliver to all these states. You can't cross state lines with alcohol shipped. So maybe you should have thought that out before you entered into like rounds of funding, um, partnered with and paid props. You know, the appliance people in Europe, props company, yeah. and they make a great coffee pot. I mean, it's a world-class, yeah. that's a world-class organization. Yeah. So crops, they partnered with to make this thing right here, this mini keg, mini, like, it's almost like a micro keg, right? Yeah. And um, it was a proprietary design where you would put, I'm gonna put the mic down and show you. Um, so if you're not watching on YouTube, you're on iTunes, you don't know what you're missing, looking at this piece of shit. Um, but I'm gonna show you the delivery mechanism. So there's like the little tap handle for the keg and there's uh, a little door on the side. There's built-in uh, carbonation, like a cartridge in there. And then you have this door where you drop uh, what's essentially, they call it a torp. It's like a torpedo going into a sub, yeah. John. Yeah, yeah. This is right up awesome. your alley, right? Yeah. You drop yeah. it in there, and it is ready to chill. And it's going to chill in a matter of moments and be ready to serve. And uh, it's a metal... For lack of a better term, it's like a big metal two liter bottle of beer. Uh, I think you can get like um, 16 or 17 12 ounce beers poured out of that. And in theory, yeah, subscription service, you know, like you get coffee from Bottom Gun via subscription delivered to your door, and you can pick the different flavors you want every month, or you can let them pick for you and be surprised. Uh, only these guys really screwed the pooch on the execution, couldn't do it. So you might be wondering, Coach Brew, how did you end up with one of their appliances, but no beer? That's what so I was they, wondering. Yeah, they ran a promotion where um, they would give you the appliance if you subscribed for their beer. And for whatever reason, um, the link they sent on their email list did not send you to their website, mistake number one. Uh, it sent you to Amazon where you had to buy the appliance. So I'm like, oh, uh, you know, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe they're not giving the appliance away. So I bought the appliance on Amazon. It was like $49. And which still, you know, for any kind of Krupp's appliance, like for a kitchen appliance, 49 bucks ain't bad. No, no. Especially not if it delivers your favorite beverage out of it. Well, it sounds so, like it sounds like a perfect thing, right? You pay forty five bucks, you you get these little mini kegs, right? And then you you got fresh draft beer in your if, office. Sounds if perfect. It, if it seems too good to be true, mm. it usually is. Mm. So then I go back into that link. You have to click on a different link to uh, order your beer and set up your subscription service. So I've now ordered the kegerator. The micro kegerator thingy bobber. Yeah. I think the technical term is thingamabobber. And I go to subscribe to get the beer. We're sorry. Uh, when you get to the checkout after you put your credit card number in, in they process payment and everything. Uh, we're sorry. We do not ship to your address, your mailing address. Oh. Like that's weird. Cause yes, I live in Maine. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere. I get that. Uh, you know, we're affectionately known as America's tailpipe for that reason. You know, we're literally last stop on the continental U.S. I get it. But I don't live like up in uh, Caribou, Maine. I live like in the largest metro in the state, two hours from Boston. You don't deliver to where I live? Yeah. 
but you delivered other parts of the state? Are you kidding me? It turns out they don't deliver anywhere in the state. They don't deliver in New Hampshire. They don't deliver in Vermont. They don't deliver in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Nowhere in New England can you buy their beer. <sighs> so it wasn't just sorted by zip code that they screwed it up with their e-commerce. They screwed it up like regionally. However, I now um, cannot cancel my order. I received this thing via Amazon Prime um, in 48 hours. I'm sitting there looking at this thing on my desk and I think, hmm, who do I know in the states, like the three states where you can have beer delivered? Oh, one of my best friends, if not my best friend in the whole world, lives in Virginia. I'll have it shipped to him. He'll yeah. keep half of it and send the other half up to me. Yeah. So I pump in his address, my, my credit card, my payment processing, his address. We cannot deliver to this address. So I message the company. I get one of their Facebook bots on their chat. And they're like, oh, we'll have to uh, escalate this to another uh, level of customer service. Gee, you think? So I finally get a human being via email and they explain that their regional distributor in upstate New York in Syracuse or Rochester um, canceled their contracts so they can't deliver to Virginia. Like, you realize upstate New York, like have you looked on a map, is nowhere near Virginia. Yeah. But that's your quote regional distributor. It's closer to me in Maine than it is to Virginia. So anyway, um, I tell them I want to cancel my order, which to their credit, they did. And I said, I'd like a refund on this micro kegerator thing that I bought. They're like, we can't do that. You bought it on Amazon. I'm like, yeah, but it's your Amazon store. Right. Like, yeah, we can't, we still, we can't do that. So um, I had, if you've heard Parker bleep me out today or on any other episode of the podcast, I had far more choice words for this person than you've ever heard Parker edit out on the pod. And um, uh, I left a fabulous Google review for them. I left a fabulous Amazon review for them. And I got to looking. There are probably 20 or 30 other people who left similar reviews because their execution yeah. was so piss poor. I mean, it is beyond embarrassing. And I ended up uh, getting an email from one of the business partners in the company. Yeah. And it wasn't even remotely apologetic. It was just, hey, we're a startup. And I'm like, hey, be better. Yeah. Hey, be better. Yeah. You're not going to be a startup forever. You're not going to be a startup very long because you're probably going to go out of business. You're not going to mature and, and evolve. You're just going to go under. And that's actually exactly what they did. And there's a hilarious, you know, we're, uh, we're talking about this, recording this episode on the heels of the whole GameStop, um, yeah, yeah. Robinhood app, Reddit, yep. you know, the uh, Wall Street bets Reddit thread. There's a hilarious Reddit, subreddit thread about this company. Uh, Hopsy ceasing operations permanently, but the best part of the headline, the best part of it was the headline. Business selling dumb products quickly goes out of business. <laughs> And what, what was the name of this company? Hopsy, H-O-P-S-Y. Oh, you should see some of the reviews on Amazon. I'm just looking at them right now. It's like, uh, do not buy, terrible brand, useless, only completely. ships to six states. Yeah, so uh, hang on. It's not completely useless because I want to show you what I use it for. Oh, let's see. Okay. So in all seriousness, and here's the business lesson. Um, Nothing kills a bad concept better than over-promising and under-delivering. Mm. I mean, nothing kills a business, Right. first of all. Um, second of all, like there, some good can come out of this. And here's why. Uh, this object, this micro kegerator thing is this, one of the centerpieces of my office. I, um, when I need to keep my office door open, it serves as a fabulous, you know, 15, 20 pound door stop. Door stop, nice. To keep the door open, you know, on a nice uh, breezy day in the spring yeah. or summer. Yeah. And then also it, when it's not serving its purpose doing that, 
it sits on my conference table, which I'm recording from right now, and serves as a candy dispenser. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So we got some Werther's original candies because I'm kind of channeling my, you know, senior, my inner senior citizen. And it just sits there. Outstanding. So, so really you could, you could put a review on Amazon and say, look, this, this device, while it can't serve beer, uh, provides an excellent doorstop and a candy dish for my office. And yeah, it's kind of like one of my books, you know, they suck. You know, they're really poorly written, but it makes a hell of a mouse pad or coaster. You know? Yes. Yeah, There's some well, that's... good that come out of buying one of my books. Go to beyondstadiumstatus.com. Pick yourself up a mouse pad or a really nice coaster. And that is not true, actually. Your books are really well written. They're certainly better, more functional than that thing you've got. Oh, my God. A submarine with a screen door is more useful than that thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Man, that is just depressing. Yeah. I mean, so, what... but think about how they could have, Think about the opportunity they had. Yeah. You don't want to buy a whole keg or a half keg. You just want to sample different beers. Right. And you can no. choose from like this a la carte menu and have beer shipped to you. Now, some of it's their fault. Some of it's state government. Yeah. Like a state like Maine or, you know, a lot of these other states that don't allow. Um, this goes probably back to prohibition. They don't allow beer to be shipped across state lines. Yeah. Or wine or alcohol. However, maybe do a little research and figure out what you're up against. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, the product's probably thriving in Europe. You know, you can, I know you can get Heineken, those yeah. little Heineken torpedoes to put in that machine in Europe, but man, like do your homework before you launch a product folks. Yeah. Yep. Understand Absolutely. where you're, what you're shipping and where. So yeah. it's a great cautionary tale and a fabulous candy dish and doorstop. Where did uh, where did you leave that one review at? I'm trying. To, I've been trying to research to see if I could find your review. Um, I've been reading some pretty nasty reviews on this on this thing. Well, Parker, I'm kind of like the mafia. In that their motto is "Never do your own violence." So I may have used a different name. <laughs> what what name would you have used? I don't know. I'm going to go on Amazon. I'm going to try and look, see if I did it there uh, or on Google or where. I, I just looked it. through all the Amazon reviews. Okay. I see. And they may have deleted it. It's, uh, yeah, someone said they're out of business because of COVID. No, they're out of business because they're stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's you just. You can't fix stupid, but you can muffle the sound of it with duct tape. <laughs> True. But uh, no, it's a great example of, uh, of like kind of what you said was like, you have a great idea and you have a great plan, but it's all about execution, right? And, and if you can't execute on your plan, then it, it's useless, right? It's uh, you create yep. a candy dish, a very expensive candy dish. And, and that is, uh, that's a shame. You found it? Uh, well, I don't know if it, this is it. It's, this is, this one says, Stephanie Adams, do not purchase if in New England area. Do not purchase it. Why? If in New England area. Yeah. Dis um, discontinued deer or beer distribution to New England area location after six months of purchase, making this unit completely worthless. Yeah, I think I started mine with if I could give this damn thing zero stars, I would. Yeah. And I, I, I'm angry that Amazon requires me to give it one star. Anyway. Um, Incredible so, cautionary tale of what might have been could have been absolutely amazing. X factor in the United States. Could have been amazing, but it was all about execution. They they failed completely at execution. I mean, and the basic execution, like I need beer. Look, you know, it's almost like what I was thinking about when you're holding that up is they, that that Krupp's unit is an amazing uh, razor, and you know what? Yes. You can't buy razor blades for it, so it's completely useless. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to Krups. Way to go. Yeah. Krups. Yeah. You know, sorry, you part of the Hopsy. Hopsy's uh, good cautionary tale of what not to do. X Factor fail. Good story. Absolutely. Now you see why, like, I led with all these others. This is actually worse than the Edsel, the Betamax, the Cheetos lip balm. Yeah. It's yeah. far worse, right? 
Absolutely. It's terrible. It didn't, didn't even get the first base. Well, it, it's like me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me throwing up softballs for Coach Brew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. He's still awake down there. It says, hold on. There's one that says, if I could give this machine zero stars, I would. If you want to know how bad this machine is, look no further than the Hopsy website. There you will discover that they no longer sell this model and now sell a different model. I'm willing to bet the main reason is due to the fact that this machine is so noisy that it is impossible to have a conversation or watch TV with this machine in the same room. Oh, so this wouldn't be, this wouldn't be you. No. But same sentiment. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's so, there's so many. I mean, I've, I've gone through hundreds of reviews and all of them are just like, this could have been great, but they failed at the execution of it. Mm. Every single one of them. I drives me crazy. Well, cautionary tale. Good one. Yep. So what do you got for us today, John? You were all fired up in our pre-production meeting. So I'm to kinda... the point where I thought you had roid rage. You <laughs> all know you're a bit of a meathead. You like to pick heavy things up and put it down, put them down. Yeah. And repeat. Yeah. And um, you, you were uh, so heated that we came up with uh, we came up with the idea. And if you want to leave a comment or a voicemail yep. about this, would you would you listeners like us to do a Patreon? You know, paid subscription <laughs> service where you can listen to and watch our pre-production meetings and get special bonus content from time to time. And this is where John, who is like all buttoned up for the most part, really lets it all hang out is during those meetings. I, I, I thought he was going to have an aneurysm. He was bursting blood vessels in his neck. Absolutely. Well, you can get access. So yeah, if we could do a Patreon account, let us know. Uh, you can come in, you can get unedited unscripted access to the pre-production meetings which are filled with um let's just say the kind of things you hear on a nuclear submarine the kind of language you hear of legends <laughs> and uh maybe we'll throw in just a whole recording as a whole like no cuts no nothing just yeah. raw material Pure, unedited raw content uh yeah so no there's no beeps in the pre-production meetings that's for sure and I, and, I, and I got a beef too, Coach. I know you're pissed off at the Hopsy company and you have every right to be. I'm, I'm mad at a company that I, I love and, that's uh -oh. what, and I don't want to be mad at them, but I am mad at them because, uh, what? Uh, Tinder? No, I don't have a Tinder account. I don't even know what that is. I'm too old. Grind Grinder. It's not Grinder. <laughs> OnlyFans? I don't have an OnlyFans. MySpace? I never had a MySpace account. <laughs> what what company could you be mad at, John, that you love? I mean, I just named companies you love. No? I know. Rogue Fitness. And if really? you don't, I know, I know. I love this company. I mean, they are the leading manufacturer. What's that? They make some good stuff. They do. They're the leading so they're manufacturer. Squat racks? Yeah, great squat racks and and good bars. Uh, I mean, uh, phenomenal. I use a I use a, a rogue uh, deadlift bar. I mean, phenomenal stuff that lasts forever. Uh, they're the leading manufacturer of American-made strength and training equipment. They're based out of Columbus, Ohio, and they've only been in business since 2007. And it was an Air Force veteran by the name of Bill Henniger started the company, and he couldn't find the kind of stuff he wanted for his home gym. So he started his own company. It's a great story. It fits all the stories we talked about with, with X Factor. And I believe they're an X Factor type company. They make the best. They sponsor like so many different major lifting events in, our, in, the, in the lifting industry, whether it's Strongman, whether it's CrossFit Games, whether it's just powerlifting. I mean, the, they have become the brand uh, in the industry. So when they, when I want something, I always check their website first because I want to know what's the best of the best. What's the best I can buy? So I was in the market for, um, uh, so I, you know, I do some dumbbell workouts and I was in the market for these incremental weights that would snap onto dumbbells. And so here's an example. If you're on YouTube, you can see one. These actually snap onto a dumbbell and it gives you an extra pound, right? So you can build up your weights, you get one, two, three, four, and then you can go to your next increments to five because most dumbbells are five pound increments. So these are kind of good for training so you can increase your weight week on week. So I wanted to buy some and I wanted to buy the best. 
I looked on Amazon. There was a bunch of kind of Chinese made brands out there. You looked where? Uh, sorry, that on an online store. That's a fine right there, Parker, write that one down. But oh. I went to, to an online market to find some cheap Chinese stuff and they were cheaper than the row. But I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to buy the row. I'm going to. So what I did was I ordered two, uh, so four of these one pounders and I bought four of these 1.5 pound things, right? So you think that's pretty easy. They'll send it to me, right? Piece of you cake. Think, right? Right. So I did get one, I did get the set of one pounders, no problem. They were just like what I thought they'd be. But then I got this. And if you're watching YouTube, it is a giant like rubber band. And I don't know like if I need like a stack of dollar bills to put this rubber band on. I'm not really even sure what this is, right? Well, that's how you, you roll with the Benjamins. I wouldn't say you carry a stack of ones. Well, yeah. You... When John Rennie makes the CEO of Peak Demand and makes it rain, he's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> Right. And so I need a big Was that a hand. gift? Was that just a complimentary gift they included? Or is this a... Uh, well, that's, so, it's, so that's, why, that's why I didn't know. So you know what I do? I did this. I called customer service because customer service we know is alive and well in America today, right? So I called their customer service expecting to have some meathead answer the phone. And he's like, he's going to like bond with me right away. Like, oh, I know what your problem is. We're going to take care of you, right? Fellow no, meathead. instead... He said he's, he's, he didn't understand why that could happen. So, but he said, do me a favor, take a picture of the rub, giant rubber band and send it to this email address and we'll get it sorted out. I was all right. So I took a picture, sent it to the email address. Nothing happened. Never heard from him. Then like two days later, I get Rick an email it. back saying, uh, why did you send a picture of a giant rubber band to us? <laughs> so so I, I went through the whole routine, explained what happened and-, and Brain uh, teaser, I'm just testing you guys, yeah. yeah. What's the brain teaser? You're just testing them. I just sent you a picture of a giant rubber band. Yeah, no, brain oh, teaser. exactly, yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, they, so then I had to go explain to them, they sent me the wrong stuff and what have you. So then the first time I go to use this Rogue, the first one I got, the Rogue, you know, state of the art, best in the business. They have paid yep. two times as much over the Chinese brand. First time I use it, it it, it breaks. Like as soon as I slip Dang. it over, it, it broke. I mean, I'm talking like I'm using the best of the best right here and it breaks the first time I use it. That's so a big then, ass crack. <laughs> Not to be confused with a big ass crack. Yes, exactly. So I ended up on the phone with them again, uh, explained to them and they said, well, um, you know, that, uh, well, just take a picture of it and, uh, uh, we'll we'll take care of it and send it. So to you're like, no, no, I know how the story ends. In three days, this is exactly what I said. Right? I'm like, like, why did you take a picture of one of our dumbbells with a, and why did you put a crack in it? <laughs> you were just a, so I explained. I said, no, I'm not doing that. There's, here's what happened. You sent me a rubber band. I never got the 1.5 weights, and then the one weight I got, it was split the first time I use it, and. Uh, Anyways, we went back and forth, but it was almost an, it was almost two weeks, probably two and a half weeks later that I ended up getting what I wanted, which was one of these, a set of these instead of these, and they do inexcusable find. But my point is, is that, um, is that I love the brand Rogue Fitness, yep. right? And I want to be a raving fan, but it's all about just what you talked about earlier. It's about execution. It's about delivering on what your promises and and uh, and when something goes wrong you have an opportunity as a company to really make a fan for life when you screw up, or you can create even more frustration. And in my case, they created a lot more frustration. And now I second guess myself when I go to Rogue to buy my equipment, I might check out the cheap brand and maybe, you know, maybe it's going to be uh, just as good. So I think, I think Rogue, if you're listening, I love your stuff. I love your brand. I love what you stand for, but come on guys. I mean, the quality of your goods, the, the terrible customer service, um, you know, that's not, that's not good. You know, that so, that's, you could save some money in advertising if you actually be good in terms of your product performance. And here's the whole thing with that story, John, is there's actually an easy solution. Rogue, if you're listening, Rogue, this is for you, no free shout outs, no right. free coaching, but I'm going to give you free coaching. Right. right? Um, it's so preventable because you can easily remove a friction point for the customer with this. Sure empower your customer service representatives to solve the problem up to a certain financial level. Right. Like anything other two, under two grand or like set whatever parameters you want. 
each customer service rep is empowered to just go ahead without asking, you know, without getting permission from a manager. Hey, I can fix that for you. We're going to send you another set. Really, really sorry that happened. You don't yeah. need to send the old one back. Hang on to it. And you know what? That 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 set of uh, you know rubber bands that we sent you keep that too. Yeah. Just think about the profit margins on something like that. I think we all know it's made the same place that the virus is manufactured. Exactly the same same right? town. But they did yeah, tell like, them to keep the rubber like bands. By the factory, way, factory in one factory in Wuhan. They're manufacturing rubber bands, and the next factory or lab over, they're manufacturing a virus. Yeah. So I did. But keep in all seriousness, bands. like the how many how many cents do you think it costs to make that? Twenty cents. I don't know. Probably Ten. generous. That's probably generous, right? Yeah. And one of those uh, plates you attach on your. Uh, your dumbbells. How much do you think that is? Yeah, maybe two bucks, you know, because it's got some steel in there. And you paid how much for it? Uh, I think a set of them was 30, 30 bucks. Yeah, so two bucks to manufacture mm -hmm. plus shipping cost on slow boat from China. Um, your margins are so good on that that yeah. you can afford just to allow a customer service rep to replace. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I because just, that I just... same person's going to buy a squat rack, they're going to buy a hex bar. They're going to buy, you know, all sorts of other accessories and weights and plates and things. Yeah. But, you know, here's where, here's where I'm, I, I get bothered by it. You know, they're 13, in, 13 years into a startup, right? And so the yep. founder is still actively present in the business. And so he is saying to his people, I'm sure, that we want to make the best of the best, right? We want, we want our gear to be the best. We want it to be highest quality. And, 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 but the, but I think somehow they're missing the whole customer service piece. Yeah. And, he uh, may and, not be actively present enough. In yeah, the, in yeah, the he operations. might be. Right. So another pro tip for you while we're giving free coaching, uh, and, and this is for anyone, not just Rogue, like be a customer of your own company. Yeah. You now let's say you are uh, the CEO of Peak Demand. Shout out to Peak Demand. What's Peak Demand manufacturer again, John? We make products for the electrical industry. Okay. So um, if I were counseling John Rennie at Peak Demand, CEO of Peak Demand, or Rogue Fitness or anyone else, I would say, hey, listen, as CEO, you want to call in to your 800 number, you know, which at most companies is 1-800-NO-SERVICE. Um, yes. Not a peak demand, though, of course. No. Call in. You're not John Rennie. You're not the CEO. You're just some random average schmuck off the street, Bob Jones, and you're going to order some product. And you're going to listen and see what it's like to talk on the phone with one of those people. How do they answer the phone? Do you get shuffled around someone else or can they actually answer your question? And where are the friction points, if any? Yep. And take that from all the way from the phone call to the fulfillment. Is there tracking? Are you getting email notifications on the tracking? How long does it take to arrive? Do you pay for shipping? What are the friction points? What bothered you about that transaction? You're just, it's like you're doing your own undercover boss. You're doing your own secret yep. shopper. Yep. It takes no effort, no energy. You don't have to hire someone. Just be a name, a, a different name, faceless person on the phone ordering something. So yep. you're testing, you're like testing the boundaries almost, testing the, the boundaries of what the company can actually provide. Where yeah, you're measuring the execution of your own company. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone should be doing that. Yeah, I think it's really important to do that because I think, you know, in the Navy, they taught us to ex expect what you inspect, right? Yes. So don't be surprised if you don't actually check something out and look at it and verify it. So how is your customer service? How does it perform? And I think- How long are you on hold? Yeah, so uh, exactly. And what do you hear while you're on hold? Yep. What All drives me fatty is if you just get a radio station or elevator music, just some random music. Yeah. Why aren't you recording testimonials from your customers yeah. so that the person waiting hears from someone other than you, they're about to make a really good decision? Why aren't you including basically a glorified infomercial about something you sell, about a new product, something you did in the community? Honk your own freaking horn. Hmm. You know, Tell the story. You know, the thing is with, 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 with customer service, the bar is so low <clears throat> right That's now huge problem yeah. right and 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 just a little bit of effort you can be world class 
I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot of effort to be world class. And, you know, and, and some companies have, have done that, but, but clearly, Rogue, I love you. And at the end of the day, I, I, you, got my, you got me the product I needed and I wanted, but it was just, it took too much effort. And, uh, and, and it was a lot of frustration. And my, my feeling for you changed slightly during the process. And uh, will I buy from them again? Most likely. <clears throat> but, um, you know, it's, I will hesitate now versus what I would in the, in the past. So here's my whole thing based on both of our unique stories and challenges this episode, there is one way everyone listening can make giving your business money more pleasurable than sex. And that is by providing superior service. That is by providing such a world-class experience, removing all the friction from the transaction. That was a little bit of clickbait, probably not <laughs> more pleasurable than sex, but you think about A, how low, like John said, how low the bar is set and B, you know, how riddled with problems most transactions are. Yeah. You know, and just to point out, you know, to the, the studies have said that you're more likely to buy from a brand that you had a problem with and they fixed it to your satisfaction than if you never had a problem at all. So when, as a business owner, as a business leader, when somebody calls you with a problem, that is the biggest opportunity to shine. So when I get a customer that calls and has an issue, I, in my mind, I'm smiling because this is an opportunity to show them how different we are from the competition. We don't argue with you. We're not gonna ask you for your, we, we can look up your information real quick and we get you the parts out there to replace yeah. it right away without any questions asked, without any hassle, without any going through. 10 different things on an automated collar line, right? So that's your opportunity to shine. That's your opportunity to, opportunity to build a customer for life when they have a problem. That is your opportunity. And I think a lot of companies don't look at it that way. They're, they're aggravated by, <clears throat> you know, oh, great. Now I got to deal with this customer who has a rubber band. I mean, here, just take a picture and send it in, you know? Yeah. And I think, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Parker. I was going to say, I think, in a previous episode, both of y'all had mentioned about how, especially if you're a new business and, or a smaller business, a local business, and you're competing against like some big dogs in the, in the industry, you have to find these little, almost like little uh, dents in the armor, like gaps in the armor to really kind of wiggle your way into that, like that industry, that world of business. And like doing that could be uh, through customer service. Because I've, I've talked to multiple big businesses, like I've had problems with shipping or something like that. And I get left on the phone for, I think there was one time I got left on the phone for like 30 minutes just by myself, not listening. I think I was listening to like elevator music and I just ended up like watching YouTube videos or something. Yep. yep. It was like a waste of time. I didn't want to order from them again. Yep. And I think that to your point, that's where people, the companies miss the boat on how important service and execution is. Because when it's done well, and when you invest in that, that kind of intangible thing that a lot of people don't think is important, you have to spend less money on customer ac new customer acquisition. There you go. Because you're getting so much word of mouth. Exactly. You know? You're exactly. getting so much repeat business. Yep. You're getting so many referrals to the point where you don't have to advertise. Your salespeople don't have to cold call. People come to you because they had an amazing experience. Well, and the other thing is when you have really good customer service and the returns are easy, they, you know, the, somebody talks to, talk to you on the phone, you, you take away the risk of buying, yeah. right? So you, you're not worried that you're going to get stuck with something that's going to end up being a doorstop, right? You know that that company's going to stand behind their products. <laughs> you mean like this fucking thing? Like that thing? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you know what? You know, if, if you know a comp company is good at that, then you know that, hey, they got your back if something goes wrong, right? If and, and that's why I now hesitate a bit with Rogue because I thought, wow, these guys are the best of the best. I'm going to them. I'm going to pay more money because I know I'm going to get the best of the best. And I end up getting a cracked, a big ass crack. You, you know, I think it goes to show the best. What is, what is it that a company is only as good as its employees or something like that? Or it's, what, I forget the saying. But something like that, it's like a, like a business is only as good as like its 
employees or something. So if one employee messes up, that's a bad title for the whole company as a whole. You yeah, know? you could have a great product. Let's say like John received instantly the exact product he ordered. It was perfect, flawless. Yeah. He had a bad experience on the phone with the person that sold it to him. Yeah. That's going to sour the experience way more than getting a cracked product, returning it and getting a replacement unit. If the person he spoke to who handled the replacement was absolutely smooth as butter with everything, removed all the friction, was apologetic, yep. appreciative, maybe threw in extra little gift of some sort. Like, think about this. How much would it cost them to throw in a t-shirt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It costs I mean, a dollar to have a t-shirt made and pennies to have it printed. Yeah. If you're getting just a, like a cheapo uh, old Gildan t-shirt, you know, um, yeah. So you throw in a nice little bonus for the customer who now also just became a walking billboard for you and is advertising your brand on a t-shirt while they're at the gym. Right. Exactly. Or mowing the lawn or going to the store or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. You're so a connect, walking and, billboard for next to nothing. Yeah. And if someone asks you, where'd you get that shirt? It's like, this place is cool. Like I had a problem. I called them up. They returned the thing and they just sent me a shirt. And it's like, now you're like, now you're a brand ambassador. Yeah. Yep. And it goes beyond that because not only that, that customer service representative that just sold that all of that to that person. Now say that customer is like walking around like a walking billboard. They could be like, Oh yeah. I talked to Jill from rogue fitness and she did. It was absolutely amazing. She crushed it. She, she helped me in every sort of way. So if you ever catch Jill at rogue fitness and the customer service, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's a, that's a step ask for Jill. Tell her I sent you. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Simple as that. Yep. Um, trying to look this up right now. There was a research study done. Yes. Um, using Apple products. And I'm trying to pull this up and find it. Um, I talk about this when I talk to companies about brands. And when I um, talk to college coaches, professional coaches about branding. And I'm trying to find the exact institution where this study was done. Um, so um, in academia, a university used a uh, they used an MRI machine. I can't find the name of the university, forgive me used an MRI machine to uh, scan um, participants in this experiment to scan their brains. Mm. And uh, when they showed them different images and here's what happened. Oh, this was done in the BBC. A BBC study showed participants Apple products and MRI revealed it stimulated the same exact pleasure centers of the brain as showing them pictures of God. Mm. And, you know, that's an example of the power of like people are raving fans for Apple. No one stands outside uh, the Nokia store or the Motorola store overnight waiting to get the new phone from one of those companies. No one waits, you know, to get the new um, Microsoft Surface tablet overnight outside the store, but they wait outside the Apple store. They have raving fans. People love their products, no free shout outs, Apple. But my point being, it's about how you make your customer feel. It's about how, you know, the feeling they associate in their brain. This is neuroscience. The feeling they associate in their brain with your brand. So like if you strap people up to an MRI and showed them pictures of your brand, is it doing the same thing that Apple and God are doing? Food for thought, because I don't think it's just about Apple or God. I think you can attach any brand to that experiment and see, potentially see a result. Is it going to be the same or is it going to be a very different result? Yep, absolutely. It's pretty amazing about the power of branding. And what's yeah. that branding come from? It comes from how you're treated. It comes from the experience. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Yeah, they could save some money on all their uh, sponsors and sponsorship and put some money into customer service. I don't know, maybe a little Boom. bit. Boom. 
Yep. What do you got for us, John? You got a new got, book coming out soon. Ah, uh, yeah. About I got, that. I got a new book coming out. It's called uh, All in the Same Boat. And it's uh, all in the same boat book.com. It, it will be available probably uh, for pre order in a couple of months, uh, maybe a month and a half. So I'm wrapping it up right now, working on the cover design, all in the same boat. And we're talking about a submarine being a boat. So oh, it's not a rowboat or a canoe. Uh, no. What about a kayak? No. I'm doing all these different boat rowing gestures into the camera for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it's you can't uh, row a submarine, folks. You can't row a submarine. Can't row a submarine, but I think some of the some of the things you learn in a two person kayak are probably similar to what you learned in a submarine. Uh, you can't don't flip the thing over. Don't flip the thing over and yep. try to row in the same direction. Maybe stop arguing, fighting. <laughs> it's a lot easier to get out of it above the surface than underneath. Yes, exactly. Cool. Yes. I have a keen sense for the obvious, don't I, John Rennie? You are the master of the obvious, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And how about your new book, uh, Coach Brew? How is it going? Uh, Beyond Stadium status, it's fabulous. As I mentioned earlier, it makes a hell of a coaster for your drinks or a mouse pad for your computer. Um, you could stack several of them up. You know, I recommend spending $100, get five of them at beyondstadiumstatus.com, stack them up together, maybe wrap a string or rubber band around them to make a hell of a doorstop. Right. This giant rubber band and we could stack up like a hundred. That's perfect. Yep. <laughs> so no, it's going well. Um, I, I've got, I've got my copy. I'm in the middle of it. Uh, uh, I'm going to read it. I got a flight here on the 19th. I'm going to do a little traveling first time uh, since last February. So I got nice. a flight plan. So yeah. Do you, do you remember how to fly the plane? <laughs> no. I, mean, I hear it's like riding a bike. You have yeah. what a G? You have what a G six? I do. Yeah, cheese stick is what I got. I got nothing. No, I do not have a private jet. No. Not I thought yet. you had a G six. No. Nope. You don't have a Gulfstream? I do not. No. I'm thinking of somebody else, I guess. Yeah, you're thinking of uh, our new czar of uh, environmental. What's his name there? Lurch. Lurch. Yeah. Lurch from the Adams family. I mean John Kerry. John Kerry. He's yeah. got a jet. He's got a private jet. Yeah, we're going to keep our carbon footprint down by, uh, you know, spending 10 times what a commercial flight does, traveling yeah. the world, advocating for everyone else to keep their carbon footprint down. See, I'm and a man of the people. I still travel with, uh, I still travel with, you know, commercial flights. I'm the same way, man. I mean, they call me Coach Brew because I don't fly first class. That's <laughs> the only reason people call me Coach Brew. I'm I a man of the people. You're In spite of, people, of my celebrity, I try and stay well grounded and understand the plight of the common folk by flying coach. I love it. You're setting the example, coach. Yep. So um, if you're still listening to this and you haven't tuned us out, um, be a P1, become a P1, share, like, rate, review. And tell all your friends, more importantly than, you know, digitally sharing, talk us up, yep. tell people, hey, fun podcast. You know, it's good to listen to in the car. It's even better on YouTube because you get to see the antics uh, rather than just hear the antics. We want a multi-sensory experience for you and all your friends. So talk it up, share. Um, and John didn't, you didn't like the word multi-sensory? Well, I just thought of smelling, maybe not. We probably don't want scents. Why wouldn't we? We are both best smelling authors. It's a good point. <laughs> right? It is a good point. Professional speakers and best smelling authors, folks. Exactly right. So it's a, it is absolutely a multi-sensory experience. So yeah, share, like, rate, review. Um, uh, Subscribe. But yeah, touch all my buttons and... and uh, ding all my little bells on, on whatever platform you're witnessing this and experiencing this so go ahead and just touch all my buttons and ding all my bells ding all his bells that's really what we want you to do and uh, if you want to leave a voicemail you can do that um but you know to the lady who keeps calling and doing the heavy breathing yeah we get the point uh, you know like once yeah. twice it's interesting funny 
uh, it's a little like, titillating. Tit is it titillating or titillating, John? It's tit titillating, yeah. Titilla it's titillating, but like you don't have to call 20 or 30 times and jam up our voicemail box. We get yes. it. You're yeah. a big fan. Yes. We get it. Yeah. It's flattering. Enough already. Right. Hashtag restraining order. Um, so, yeah. Well, there you have it. And there it is, folks. Parker, take us on out of here with... Uh, something exciting like a voicemail or maybe uh some walk-off music or i don't know some words of wisdom uh